You are now listening to Appointment, a podcast dedicated to showcasing the very best direct primary care providers in your community. These guests are taking the initiative to transform how you receive your healthcare services by simplifying the process and improving how healthcare is done. Appointment is sponsored by AppAxis, helping independent healthcare providers and entrepreneurs take control of their online presence by better engaging their mobile audiences no matter where they are. Learn more at AppAxisLLC.com. I am your host, Jonathan Christopher, and let's get started. Welcome back to Appointment Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Christopher. Thank you to everyone who's given me a warm greeting, all the warm greetings that I've received um, since I've started the podcast. And I'm excited to keep the show going and uh, bring you some exciting guests uh, discussing direct primary care and their efforts to improve health care across the country. As I promised in the premiere of the show, I wanted to discuss a little bit about myself so you can get to know who I am. Well, I was born and raised in the United States Virgin Islands, and I decided to go ahead and pursue my education further as a pharmacy major at Hampton University. And I changed my major after I realized that pharmacy was not for me. It didn't fit. I had always wanted to be in healthcare, but pharmacy wasn't quite as compatible as I had hoped that it was um, or that it would be. And I then changed my major to history and graduated with that degree in 2004 and went on to return to the Virgin Islands and spend the next decade in education, mostly in middle school uh, social studies. And many of those years, I was the department chair for the social studies department. So I, I returned back home, which is always difficult. The Virgin Islands has always had a challenge with regards to bringing talent back home once it's left. And so um I don't regret going back home and getting into education. A lot of good was done. I learned a lot of lessons and I had the opportunity to mentor and mentor kids both within the classroom and outside of the classroom. And I had the honor of uh, serving as the election chair for the AFT union, the American Federation of Teachers Union local. Uh, I was uh, also actually before that I was working as a building rep and represented the teachers in the union that worked in my building and I was able to have a lot of good conversations, good engagement. And I had so many opportunities. Um, One of the most exciting ones was I had a chance to redesign a textbook for the district. That was exciting to be selected by my peers as a person noteworthy enough to have the honor to be redesigning a textbook. I was probably all of 25. I had to sadly step down from my position as the teachers union election chair because I actually got a promotion. I applied for a a position at the alternative education program as a program manager and I got it. And that was in 2010. And in that program, I worked with even more at risk youth that uh, were dropout. It was a dropout prevention program. Many of these kids came from a very tough background. And it was an honor to work for that program because we were being designed from the ground up. It was an amalgamation of uh, education, of course, and we offered mental health services and there was a law enforcement component and, of course, a lot of social work presence as we attempted to help these kids improve and build resiliency to recover from their past mistakes and, you know, gut it through and and build some grit and graduate and be productive members of the society. So that job had some difficulties with regards to a lot of the frustrations when you're, when you move from the classroom, you know, and and when you're in the classroom, you see things from one perspective, but when you move into administration and you get to see some of the things that prevented you from being an effective teacher in the classroom, wow, you know, you really get your eyes opened and you realize that uh, it's a lot more complex. So, you know, in that position, you know, I can definitely understand how even more complex or just as complex that healthcare is. So while I was there at Alternative Education, you know, and even while I was a teacher, I I was always looking at getting into healthcare. 
This was always my goal, even when I was in high school. A lot of things happened while I was in alternative education from around 2010 to 2013. I realized that it was on me to make these decisions. And not only that, the healthcare discussion was, you know, really underway and getting heavy nationally. In the news, you couldn't listen to anything without healthcare coming up. And I'm listening to the conversations. I'm listening to the changes and the, or the proposed changes and the legislation. And I would hear a lot of discussions about the need in underserved communities. And these are things that I had always been thinking about. I always saw myself as a good fit. Uh, students, when they came to campus and challenged them to, you know, pursue STEM pursue healthcare, come back to your communities and establish a culture where people had mentors that returned back to their communities to encourage others from that same community to pursue fields that were very much in need. The, you know, in, in healthcare, there is a shortage in a lot of communities. And actually, while I was in alternative education, a student challenged me and I, I realized he was good at, you know, sciences and stuff and I and math. And I said to him, you know, you can make it out of here. He had a fight and I had to counsel him. And I said, you can make it out of here and, and, and come back. And he challenged me and he said, uh, in, in not so polite language, I will say, that if I was so sure of that why isn't there anyone in the hospital why doesn't he see anybody from his neighborhood that looks like him in the hospital or in the clinics and that why shouldn't i if i felt that way lead by example rather than telling him what to do and i had already made up my mind that i was going back to to school at that point but it made sense to me you know that you're going to need mentors you shouldn't really push it on somebody else to do something, especially for me, because I, I had already made it up in my mind that I was going back. And so, you know, for him to say, this is exactly how I feel. And I had already thought that that's what the feeling was by some of the young people to hear him actually confirm it out loud, really just solidified my decision to return back to school and go after this, uh, physician assistant path that I have chosen for myself. And, you know, I had done things, I had worked in a pharmacy as a pharmacy tech, and I have all sorts of experience working in community rescue. Um, and as a matter of fact, I actually, you know, Joe Biden, the vice president at the time, regularly visited St. Croix and vacationed there, especially in the wintertime for Christmas. And as part of the community emergency rescue team for St. Croix Rescue, we were trained in the jaws of life. I didn't, I wasn't trained in how to operate that, but I was definitely part of the crew that was trained as, hey, when we call on you, we need you, you know, not just for, you know, any small thing, but, you know, the president, the vice president is here and make sure you're ready if anything happens. So that was exciting. And, you know, um, Decided to move to North Carolina, moved to Charlotte, and uh, and we've pursued this. Me and my family have pursued this ever since. Had some victories academically and definitely am excited to be so once I made up my mind and I had up my family's support to return to school and move on from a career that I never really saw myself doing for a lifetime, which is education. And again, again, it's a blessing, but it wasn't for me. So yeah, once I had everybody's blessing and support and saved up a few ducats, um, it was a no brainer and moved to Charlotte and have been in Charlotte, North Carolina ever since and continue to make progress towards that goal. So in keeping with the desired length of the podcast and 
staying compliant for the various sources that I have in mind for where I'm going to send this podcast to stream to various people, to anybody who downloads it. I'm going to cut it short here and I can talk a little bit more about myself another time. And again, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the show plans. I have already started reaching out to people. I have two confirmations, which I'm excited about. Uh, One gentleman is going to be speaking with me after he returns from his conference. And I have another uh, committed physician assistant that would like to come on and speak to the audience. So this is good. This is exciting. And again, we'll talk about why the show was created because there's a good story there. And I want to thank you guys for listening in. I look forward to speaking with you. I look forward to speaking with you again. And don't forget www.appaxisllc.com is the website. I'll include my email, Jonathan, J O N A T H A N, at appaxisllc.com, as well as any links to my social media accounts and YouTube where the majority of my work is being posted. And I look forward to engaging with you. I look forward to hearing what you guys' uh, thoughts are on the show so far and what you would like to hear so I can know how to pursue this and uh, who maybe would be a great guest. I definitely want to showcase more and more physician assistants and physicians and other practitioners that have a place, that have a, a goal in mind for where they see direct primary care heading. So thank you, everybody, and I look forward to speaking with you next time. Bye.